Welcome back to the program. It's tough for most parents to know when to talk to their child about sex. Joining me now is Kenny Pugh, a celibacy abstinence advocate uh, who has some very good information. And luckily, my children are so young right now, <laughs> you don't I don't have to worry, have to about, worry about this conversation. <laughs> right, right. But we all know parents sort of dread this conversation. They do. They do. It's something that uh, a lot of parents don't want to face. Um, but it's something that they need to face head on, especially as we enter back into the school year. Uh, sex is a very big deal, especially in a culture uh, where we see it everywhere. We see it on Facebook, we see it on Twitter, and the worst thing that you can do is try to turn a blind eye to it. So what should parents do? How do you get into this conversation? <laughs> well, the first thing that I always recommend is to be aware of the opportunities to have the discussion. Uh, music, television, and, and different media um, opportunities will give you that inroads to be able to start that dialogue with your, with your child. And so um, over dinner, uh, while you're driving in, in the car uh, to and from school, uh, be bold enough to have that conversation because if you're not going to have it, someone else is going to have it with them. Yeah, and you know, parents want to know when. <laughs> it's one thing to have the conversation, but when? When is a good time? You know, it's interesting. Um, it used to be a rule of thumb to start thinking about that conversation in junior high or high school. Uh, but we're seeing instances where, where children are getting pregnant in elementary school. You have fourth, wow. fifth, sixth grade students that are getting pregnant. So uh, I say when you start to see that they have the maturity level to be able to accept it, uh, that would be a great time to initiate that conversation. So um, you mentioned used to be like junior high. I mean, so it could be earlier now. It could be earlier. And you just need to, are there warning signs or anything to look for? that you might believe your child is, you know, exploring into this area and gosh, I better have this conversation yeah, I, it's I, too late. I would definitely keep an eye on the, the friends that they have in their circles um, as they start to you know, demonstrate evidence of, of an, enhance, uh, an enhanced sense of, mm -hmm. of sexual knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, then that's a, a chance for you to start to head that off at the, uh, at the gate. Um, and then also just being, a, being aware of the type of music, the type of television programming that they're watching and always keep an eye on their, their social media networks. So you really believe the children are okay with this conversation and, and it's probably, they want their parent to sort of be the leader and just do this and have this conversation so that everybody's on the same page. They understand, you know, what, what to expect. Yeah, when, when you look at it, um, they want us to, we need to be open and honest. As parents, it's, it's our responsibility to be open and honest from the perspective of, hey, let them know that it's an uncomfortable discussion topic, mm -hmm. but we need to have it because it's a matter of life and death these days. You start to see um, all of the various uh, you know, pregnancies and, and diseases that are out there that may contribute to taking one's life. And so you need to be bold, you need to be honest, and you need to be open to have that discussion. Yeah, and here is a look at some of those uh, points that you just talked about, which I think are very good. Sex talk with teens, be aware of opportunities you mentioned. Yep. Be open and honest, share information, be straightforward. Uh, really common sense stuff here, but you know things that parents may not think about. Yeah, when you start talking about sharing information, um, in the lives of our young people, they believe that their experiences are representative of, of the norm. And so you have to let them know that uh, just because they perceive that everyone around them is having sex, that's the, not necessarily the case. Uh, also letting them know that uh, if they have uh, using, if they're you know, thinking about using contraception, that mm -hmm. that's a way to stop being pregnant. Well, three uh, out of every 10 uh, girls will get pregnant by the age of 20. And so that's one of the, the facts that I wanted to uh, bring mm -hmm. up as well as everyone believes that having sex is a great thing, but six out of every 10 people that have sex in that age bracket wish they did not have sex. And then also we have to be very cognizant about the, the uh, STD, STI infection rates um, when it comes to our teens because there are 19 million um, cases reported each and every year and half of those are attributed to the age group of 15 to 24, which is very, very, very impactful. Uh, a lot of our young people are contracting STDs, even though our pregnancy rates are going down. And look at those statistics again that Kenny just mentioned, sobering statistics. You talked about three out of 10 girls pregnant by the age of 20. Rising STD cases, ages yes. 15 to 24, very scary, startling information there. And six out of 10 teens wish they had waited. Wish they had waited. And so you as a parent really need to take that important role 
of going ahead and having these conversations before it's too late, really. Absolutely, so it goes into the next tip, which is to be straightforward. When you're straightforward, you let them know, uh, I don't want you to have sex, and these are the reasons, wh reasons why. I, want, I don't want you to go down a similar road that I might have gone down, mm -hmm. um, and that's why I don't want you to do that. I don't believe you're emotionally or physically mature enough to handle that. Uh, so be straightforward, be honest, be open, be straightforward, be willing to say, you know what, these are the reasons why I don't want you to pursue that particular activity. You also mentioned uh, be available. Yes. I mean, that's important too. It's, it's very important. You don't want this to just be a one-time discussion. You want uh, to understand that this thing called life is going to be fluid. Uh, they're going to have different things proposed to them each and every day that they go to school. And as scenarios come up that they have the ability to come back to their mother or their father to bring these scenarios to light. Uh, and you want to be available, that they trust you enough to say, hey, mom, I experienced this today at school, or hey, dad, I went through this at uh, school today. What are your thoughts? Uh, and if you open that door to say, I'm available, they'll welcome it. Otherwise, you don't want anyone else pouring that information into your child. So Kenny Pugh has a website with some good information and more details about some of the things you've talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Tell uh, our viewers a little bit about where they can find that information. Yes, they can find me uh, on the web at www.abstinencematters.com, www.abstinencematters.com. I keep a lot of good information out there. I'm actually in the middle of a tour uh, going uh, across the country, and so I'm sharing information about uh, sex and relationships and all that fun stuff. Kenny Pugh is on tour. on tour. He is a busy man. <laughs> but great information. We can find you online. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We appreciate that. When we come back, we have some helpful information to teach your kids about money. It's a financial education unlike any other. Details when we come back.